Good morning, everybody. I'm ready to start the show in just a couple minutes. I'm still uh, super high. I just had a customer come through the store with some wax. And I know I always tell you guys that you can only get so high, but I took a couple of hits of that, and dude, I am I am beyond not ready to start the show, so give me a couple more minutes. <laughs> we all have those days where we show up to work and we're not just quite ready to start our day. I am in that point, only there's a hundred people staring at me not ready to start my day. Mm. It was spectacular. On the ambulance and the ambulance when you're supposed to check out our truck, I would run up to the gas station on Washington and uh and Maine and we would go get our free uh, egg roll and coffee to start our evening or day or whatever shift we were on. Oh, my God. I would get so high before work. I would get so high before work, I just never drove the ambulance. And I would show up, and I would get out of the back of the ambulance, intermediate, paramedic, whatever. I would get out of the back of the ambulance, and my hair would blow in the wind, and I would have a theme song. Oh, my God. I could hear it every time, right? I mean, it's Believe It or Not, right, from uh, Greatest American Hero. <laughs> I'm walking on air because that's, kind of, that's the kind of stumbling hero that I am. I mean, I didn't have any hair. There was no theme music. But every time those doors opened, 
it was like supermodel hair blowing like you show up on the scene as a 911 EMS rescue worker and you're just like you hear the clouds open you see the ray of sunshine wow those were super awesome times I'm the grow boss this is cannabis hotline and like I am so the <laughs> one had a customer come through the store 20 minutes ago I took a couple of puffs of wax uh, whatever was in that uh whatever was in that pen I am so high it's hard to shake it off I definitely wouldn't drive right now I am super high and I always make that observation that cannabis only has a certain amount of receptors in your head and that even if even if you continue to smoke it all day long you can only get so high but I got to tell you when we talk about the articles like when you read articles about hospitals in Denver when pot legal states where people are showing up to the hospital overdosed on cannabis I got to tell you today my hands are a little shaky it's so much cannabis I think what it is is I think I'm sort of having like a half an anxiety attack how's that for some shit I've got I've got shaky hands I'm a little anxious I stalled my show I I I how the the hair was the hair was more than 15 years ago that's you know so uh yeah hair's been gone for quite a while um but but uh oh sorry omc the hair's been gone for quite a while so yeah like my reflexes aren't the same i don't know i'm too high to see if there's any kind of difference in pain tolerance but i'll tell you in terms of i seem super sensitive to the air conditioner that keeps going on and off like I'm having cold and hot flashes. It's like I'm having an anxiety attack. <clears throat> Woo. Now I'm not prepared to call 911 and turn myself in and, and, and like that. But I could see how someone who feels like this who's just learning to get high for the first time might not be able to count to 10 and, uh, and, and wait it off. Ah, yes. Thank you, Ramon. Damn, and you're a pro. <laughs> Woo. I mean, I got to tell you, while not like a hit of crack that comes on like this and is gone in 30 seconds, and then you're chasing it again. <clears throat> I mean, from what I hear, it's not like that. But I am super high like that. Like, like super anxious like that I'm probably gonna regret this video later for sitting here super anxious in front of you but you know I wonder you know as a paramedic nurse and you at somebody who smokes cannabis for 35 years now I don't eat it because it always makes me feel like this and I am I uh, usually don't like even though yesterday I put a little wax on top of the bowl Boy, I'll tell you, that's not the same thing as a vape pen with a good battery. Like, you've seen me smoke that vape pen here occasionally. I'm not really a wax guy. But uh, that vape pen, you sort of got to hit it, and then you got to puff on it. I mean, if you, if you know vape pens, I see you guys come through my store. You've got a battery that looks like this fucking remote, and you're sucking on it. And you release just this, well, impressive cloud of smoke. I mean, I can't deny it. I mean, it envelops your head. It looks like you're on fire. And then I think about that little vape pen. I'm so high. And then I think about that little... I got cotton mouth. And then I think about that little vape pen that I hit off of. Dude, that's not giving me the same dose for sure because... I mean, I, I puff on that thing trying to get some grinding on it. But what came through my store today, that was like the first time I was ever in like one of those clouds of smoke with a real battery. Woo. Wow, my head's spinning. Crazy. Woo. So it is, um, uh, I got to say, it's a touch overwhelming. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs>
anyway so let me take a look at a couple of the comments and rather than take a call let's go through the comments oh let's discuss auto flowers those are fun i like auto flowers um they get small they're smaller and you really can't control their veg time so in terms of auto flowers you just do more um that's uh jazzy's Ooh. Agreed. Auto flowers are great for outdoors. Another brilliant observation. You don't got to worry about the light. Ooh, who else can show up for work, admit they're too high, and, <laughs> and totally even get away with it? It's a good desk to have. Hmm. Ooh, yeah. I got someone calling in. OG Kush is calling in. They want to talk about something that they're giving away. And um, uh, let's see. All right, well, if you guys want to start calling in, I'm at least feeling a little less high, I think. The number is 84 Grow Boss. And uh, I think you just watched me have an anxiety attack. If you want to call in and ask some questions, um, I think I'm ready to start. Probably not, though. Woo, that's why I just smoke pot. I just smoke cannabis like this. Perhaps if I needed something more, then I would explore like a Rick Simpson oil or something else like that. But I have people call me all the time that talk to me about the medicine side of it and what it does and, and how it helps them. And, oh my God, I actually got a phone call. Was, uh, okay, mute the TV. Say hi, you're on with the Grow Boss. What can I do for you? Hey, Grow Boss. I was actually your last caller from last show, and I wanted to call back because it was a comedy of errors. I respect what you do in your time so much. I had some note cards made out, and then I missed the start of the show, and by the time I found them, you'd answered all my questions because you know what's going to go on. So I wanted to call back today and try and be a little more coherent. Okay. So, and, and this what I watch you go through is why I don't tangle with the wax. So, my big question is this. As somebody who's grown all kinds of different plants my whole life, I would like to do some of this in, uh, for the hand crafting of it, just like my friends who uh, home brew their own beer. They don't do it because it's cheaper or it's easier. They do it because they want a better product. So for a guy like me who's not interested in mass production, where would you suggest we start? Um, first, I completely agree with you. The best beer I ever had, I bottled myself. So I completely understand that aspect of it. I would suspect that the best place to start is answer honestly. How much yield do you want? Because the cannabis doesn't change. I don't care what light you use. I don't care what nutrients you use. The cannabis is cannabis. I mean, for me to get this high, we literally had to put it into a wax form. And once it's in wax form, think about it. It's ubiquitous. You can't tell where it came from, even if it was 12% THC. Now in wax form, this guy was like, it's 85% THC. Oh my God, so high. This guy was like, it's 85% THC. So, if if we talk I'm only laughing because the one time I did wax, I damn near drooled on myself, and I just felt I felt it was no good because it was too much, too fast, and then I came down too soon. So, for an old hippie like me, I completely understand. I don't mean to be laughing at you on the phone. No, that just means that like 45 minutes from now, I'm going to come down in front of everybody too. So. There we go. I have that to look forward to at the end of the show, in the middle of the show. Um, you have to pick a yield. If you want to learn, listen, people who do bonsai, they do one little tiny freaking plant. They don't do 100 bonsai plants. It isn't about quantity. You're talking about quality. And in terms of quality, getting frosty, cake-like nugs has nothing to do with the light. Which light? Or the perfect environment. It has to do with 12 weeks of not killing your plants and allowing them to fully express themselves. The healthier your plants are, <clears throat> the healthier your plants are, 
the more frosty they're going to end up. The fewer problems you have, the frostier they're going to end up. And since yield's based on light and quality is based on grower talent, you can't get the quality without the yield or the yield without the quality. That's all I'm saying. You see what I'm getting at? It makes perfect sense. So are you doing this for anything beyond smoking? For you personally? No, not really. Just me personally. I don't, you know, I live in the North Valley. I retired here from the Midwest, and I don't have a lot of friends. And quite frankly, if I start growing, I don't need to make a bunch of new ones just because I got pot. So, yeah, pretty much it's just for me, for my medicinal and, and whatnot. So I don't need a huge yield. And, I, you know, when you talk about running in AC and add in CO2, it really gets to be way be I want to use the KISS method. I want to keep it simple, stupid. I want to grow some plants, not kill my shit, you know, take good care of it and, and let it do its thing. So, you know, if I can get something where my house AC is going to handle it, my thoughts uh, from lots and lots of research I did, especially moving from the Midwest to the desert climate out here, I'm looking at probably doing soil because it's what I'm familiar with and it gives me the most buffer from what I understand, so to speak. And I don't have to take care of it that much. <laughs> and uh, I'm looking at doing a scrog, probably a four by four or five by five, either a tent or I'm looking for you to talk me out of trying to build a cabinet. I'll leave that out there for a moment. And, um, you know, maybe two to four strains at a time just for my own personal use. Maybe even uh, try and grow some of this crazy shit that looks like fruity pebbles, you know, just just because I can, as opposed to trying to knock it out. So, you know, I've looked at the T5 seem to be the way to go because they're going to, you know, between heat cost and everything else. But if I can just set up a couple tents in my house, hey, it saves me a few bucks to grow my own meds. All right. I'm going to answer the rest of that off the air. Thank you so much for your call. Oh. Okay, I should do that before I hang up so the caller knows that I do that. Okay, still learning how to do the show. So you'll get that back in one sec. I want to thank you for the call. You're going to see this in about 15 more seconds. So I want to thank you for that call. And my observation is this. It's always those four foot eight bulbs like here in the Great Root Race. We're using those bad boy T5s from uh, Nickel City. Those are fantastic. They're VHOs. They get very hot. Do an eight bulb in veg and a four bulb in flour. And that's about a half pound every 60 days, which is an ounce a week. And with an ounce a week, you can't help but find new friends. All right, 410. 410, hey, you're on with the grow boss. Really quick, since you were talking about it, and since you don't usually get too much into the medical side of things on your show always, uh, I just came off of smoking nothing but wax for about a year and a half straight. And I was literally smoking like a half gram a day of just like 85% THC wax, totally over the top. And I have to say that coming back to smoking just flour, like I, I use cannabis for a lot of various mental disorders like PTSD, anxiety, things like that. And um, the mini anxiety attack that you were kind of describing it's something that does go away, but what my girlfriend said was that after I stopped smoking nothing but wax all the time, my episodes that I kind of have periodically that I use pot to not have sort of, like, went down. Like, I, when I started going back to just flour all the time, and, like, it's not to say occasional wax use is okay, but I wanted to add that you're definitely not the only person who's experienced that. I just thought I'd put that out there on the show, that, uh, yeah, smoking tons of THC is not always the best thing sometimes in taking it slower really is a lot different so i just thought i'd throw that out there dude i can feel my teeth i can feel the air <laughs> and i'm so yeah. high i can feel my teeth oh yeah oh my god I'm so high i don't like and being this the, high. and when you get to the point Right, and when you get to the point where that doesn't get you that high anymore, that's when you know you're in the wrong place. Because, like, I was to the point where, you know, when I'm going through a half gram or more of wax a day, that's the equivalent of four grams of bud or more. And it's like, why do you, you know, what, am I really smoking an eighth of day? No, I'm smoking like a gram a day when I smoke flour. So it's kind of like, yeah, it's just overkill in all ways, total overkill if you're going to use it all the time, you know? Wow. Let me ask you this. Tell me a little more 
Okay, first let me say this. Take a breath. It's it's you and me on the phone. Like you sound like a, you talk. You're talking really quick, but tell me a little more. Or I'm super high, but tell me a little more about how you physically use it because you're right. I don't get calls for medical very often. So tell me a little bit more about your interaction. Give me a testimonial. Whoop whoop. Give me a testimonial about well, how it affects you. Well, I was yeah, I was straight up dabbing out of like a big rig which is probably like i mean that's pretty much the strongest way you can do it like and i do i kind of did hot non-capped dabs because that's the other thing is when you're dabbing you can kind of go one of two ways you can go for flavor which is where you're going to do a lower temperature dab and you're going to throw a cap on it and so instead of the oil just completely combusting when it hits the nail it's going to bubble a little bit and then when you cap it that's when it's going to smoke up and you're going to get a lighter hit that doesn't hit you as hard but it's a lot more difficult to achieve that and that's where the flavor connoisseur part comes in but what i was doing was just straight up hot nail dabs with no cap which is where you just heat up the nail to like a thousand freaking degrees and you you know combust it like really dramatically and that's where you're going to get that you know really super over the top high because it's combusting so fast and it's like so hot that it's just hitting you harder and the less hot it is, the more flavor you're going to get and the less intensity of high you're going to get, but it's still intense. So. Okay, in relation to, that's you smoking it. Now tell me, is there, tell me, well, if you want to share your PTSD story or not, but it, tell me how you feel before and after. Well, it's, you know, when I got used to using it all the time, it was okay. But like I said, like, it was almost like if what I believe is that if, I, if you use too much THC going into your system at the time that you are having an, a preemptive episode already, like if you're freaking about, about your anxiety and your PTSD and you say, oh, well, I'll take a dab to calm down. Sometimes that works, and sometimes that will make it worse because you're ingesting so much THC so quickly that I believe that if you have certain mental problems, it can cause you issues. But I, I think that it's different per person. But personally, I don't know a lot of people who use wax for medicinal purposes. The people that I know who use it are usually just really serious, you know, smokers who just, I don't know. They just do nothing but live rosin all the time. I don't know how they do it. But those guys in D.C., it's like a game to them. They just want to see, like, how how messed up they can get. And I'm like, well, that's not really my goal. So, <laughs> you know, if, you, if that helps at all. But, yeah, it's a lot of what you described feeling. Like, if when you get too stoned too quick, it sets on really fast. It's like, it's like the, uh, the crack of butt. You know, that's essentially how I put it to people. I'm like, this is going to destroy, you know... <laughs> There's just no need for it, really. It's a it's a game for for kids to play with, in my opinion. Okay, i I can completely I can completely see that because I remember trying to see how many hits of acid I could take. Um, doing coke. How much coke can right. you do? Yep. Um, what, what, yep. The grow and that's boss. That's what the kids do. <laughs> I gotta tell you, it's probably one of the the that intensity of personality in the male. Male specifically, and even more so oh, now yeah. in females, but that intensity of the population in the United States, not only is it like probably one of our strongest traits, but it drives us to do stuff like that. Like I didn't just take one hit off that guy's, that, that guy's wax pen. I took two off one and one off another as he's handing them back and forth and telling me stories <laughs> about how he works 60 feet off the ground and just... You know, hits it like uh, it's, uh, you know, like a vape pen. Mm. Yeah. And, and I mean, I, there's a guy that I know, you know, this, this one dude I know literally wakes up in the morning and smokes like a half gram dab of live rosin. Like that's his wake and bake. And I'm like, dude, do you ever get high? Like, because that's crazy. I mean, a half gram of live rosin is about 98% THC and 2% of it is trichomes for flavor. So if you're dabbing a straight up half gram of THC, what are you going to do with the rest of your day? And where are you going to go from there? And if you're really used to that, maybe you should ask yourself, 
hey, is that a good thing that I'm used to taking in a straight up half gram of THC as soon as I wake up and then ingesting multiple grams of THC throughout the day? Like, that's what these guys are doing. And I'm like, dude, I mean, there's a lot of research out there on, you know, there's a lot of people who have smoked pot every day for years and years and years. But there's not a lot of research and there are not a lot of people who have smoked, like, two grams of THC every day for multiple, multiple years. And I would like to see some research done on that because that's what interests me is, is it bad for you if you go that hard with it? You know, can it be that bad? Can it be bad? I mean, it is cannabis, but it's like, can it be bad if you go too hard? That's the question in my mind. Over time, you know. Listen, I appreciate the call, right? Thanks. Yes, sir. And, and I think that's, if you have an opinion or you'd like to tell me a little bit more about that, I think that's interesting. I've been smoking pot for 35 years and only recently I've started to notice like I can hear it in my cough and in the morning. So I've also noticed that I've started to taper back on the amount that I smoke. That's why you saw me a few weeks back with with the uh, with the volcano, with the ion volcano. And I was putting it in a bag because my throat hurt from smoking cannabis so all, for so many years. But that's not the same thing. Combusting a plant material is not the same thing as as combustible wax or the intensity. And I know with different drugs, there are uh, there are different ways to uh, use the same drug, and different dosages have different medical effects. Low dose versus high dose. Those are all different ways to do it. So, yeah. Woo. I got to tell you, I am feeling better. That means something like, uh, what, like 30, 35 minutes before I really started to come down on it. Come down off it. Woo. If you have any questions, you can call in the shows. All right. Let's see. Good morning. You're on with the Grow Boss. Hey, Grow Boss. It's an app OG Kush. Just uh, wanted to tell you a little bit more about that uh, Nanolux 1000 watt we're giving away on our channel. Okay. So you want to call up the show and talk about a little bit about what you're giving away on your channel. And I'm totally down. However, I've had an anxiety attack today if you've been watching the show from smoking too much cannabis. So you tell me something. Yeah. So you tell me something first about you. And then I will let you tell us something about you and your prize. So, do you smoke cannabis? Absolutely. And if you want a little help coming down from that extreme high you're experiencing, do a little bit of CBD. If you've got even a little bit of distillant or a high CBD strain around, that will actually bring you down from um, being a little bit too high. That is super interesting i've never heard that i don't have any cbd but i you say the cops will go around with naloxone for the heroin addict so a little bit of cbd that sounds just as reasonable i sir will accept your offering what would you like to tell us about your product i would like to tell you guys last time i was on with the grow boss we had a little discussion about led and uh the normal if you will, light. Um, the difference I found was the footprint. If you're going to go with the LED, you're going to have this small footprint over your lights. And if you're going to go with like the Nanolux double-ended 1000 watt, which is completely overclockable to 1200, by the way, you're going to get a nice footprint for your grow. And it also is the tried and tested method. So we went ahead and we got, just to show our appreciation for everybody, the Nanolux 1000 watt um, light to give away. We found it has the low profile, the three-year warranty, um, just, you know, 26 different selling points. And we figured that was the best way to say, hey, guys, thanks for embracing us. Thanks for taking us in in the community. Here's just something to show a little love. Okay. And, you know, I will tell you from years of watching Nanolux advertising that you guys have super clever advertising. I also know that you guys are the ones who have, 
you have the ability to control like 1200 lights in a room like you guys have software you guys have some super cloud computing software don't you Actually, I'm not affiliated with Nanolux at all. We actually do seed bank reviews here on YouTube. Um, that was just the light we acquired to give away. Okay, so you do seed bank. So tell me more about your seed bank. Do you have a website? Yeah, we, uh, we do the it's Hanap OG Kush here on YouTube. We do seed bank and seed farm reviews. Um, our channel right now has 22 different seed banks we've reviewed from all over the world, um, everywhere from Russia, Africa, um, the Hindu Kush Mountains to California. I mean, we literally have tried to give you a nice wide palette. Um, and then we've, of course, got 20, 25 more seed banks on the way hey, to give you guys just a You're steady stream of them. Course. We're doing the Give best away. we can to get the information this, out there. Uh, there are choices. Be, Every uh, single uh, one takes uh, Bitcoin, if not MasterCard, Visa. They all ship to the United channel. States with um, one the exception. The very last seed bank we reviewed, sorry, reviewed, FastBud does not ship to the USA. They're out of Barcelona, Spain, but they do have... 10 different seed bank seed banks um, listed on their anybody, website that you can, can order from them that do ship to the U.S. So in a roundabout way, we still get you their seeds uh, we'll to the U.S. To any country that wins, uh, Is this you, you on it. the website with the beard and the hat? That would be me. Nice. Well, there you are, totally getting high. All right, so have you, have you personally <laughs> ever had an anxiety attack from smoking too much? Um, DE um, actually, bucks, I haven't, but fixture. my old lady, she's on the videos with me. She has actually Within had an anxiety ADS attack from smoking too much. Um, and then we have actually <laughs> used the CBD distillant to come calm her down quite um, a bit. So you guys it know, actually, I will firsthand vouch for that working. It picks up. I, I appreciate it. So give me a uh, shout out one more time for when uh, you want system. people to register for so your going through and making multiple for your giveaway. I will, emails doesn't help. I will um, drop it uh, in out. chat. I will so drop a link to the Gleam out. giveaway. Um, we always Gleam use Gleam because it's a third party Gleam program. Gleam we uh, can show no favoritism that way and it's a fair up and up. And the other thing I'd like to say is it doesn't matter where you are in the world. If you win this light, we will get it to you. All right. Thanks so much for the call. <laughs> wow, they're gonna ship. Um, the giveaway starts right now. Five minutes, and it will carry on to the seventh due to. We're going to Norco. Norco. Oh, <clears throat> oh I see top. what this is. Yeah. Oh shit! The. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, so the video was playing while I was talking, so let's make sure I go through mic on, desktop audio. Bro, running live video on YouTube is annoying as crazy. Uh, all right. There you go. So, whoo, too high. Video's got to be muted on YouTube. Okay, can't run video on YouTube. Whew. Yeah, you can see OG Kush will make up for it on, uh, on the live chat. You can find his link there. I got to tell you, I am still almost as high as I was 40 minutes ago. Oh, my God. I feel like somebody drugged me. Like, you would have seen me smoking cannabis through the whole show already. I gotta stand up. I am super high. Check out my sponsors. Green Pad, right? CO2 for your garden, Mega Meters, Clonex Solution, Thermoflow, Mondi. Ooh, super. Forty. Minutes later. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> uh. Uh.
<laughs> Let's see how I handle this. 805, you're on with the Grow Boss. Hey, Grow Boss. This is Tim out in Simi Valley. Ah, oh, Simi Valley. Good morning. Yeah, hey, uh, Kathy, my girlfriend, is the one who hooked us up. Uh, I, I suffer from PTSD and anxiety, and I had an anxiety attack back in 1975. I quit smoking all the way up till 2013 when my VA psychologist put me back on. Tell me more. Keep going. I got... Uh, okay. I want you to talk. Well, anyway, I was... Uh, I was at six foot three inches tall. I was down to 147 pounds soaking wet from anxiety, from the PTSD. And he put me back on. And within two months, I was back up to about 208. <laughs> so, I don't... <laughs> you know, of all the things you could have, of all yeah. the things you could have offered us, you could have been like, I'm up in the morning jogging. I'm changing the world. Nope. I put on 60 pounds. That's the. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, well, what it was is, uh, you know, I wasn't eating. I wasn't sleeping. I was, uh, it was just really bad. I was dying. Uh, I was always working and working hard. I, I really was. I was, I was almost gone. <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> anyway, I didn't like the high after I had a, a, an anxiety attack. Uh, back in 75, I quit smoking all the way up to 2013. Now, I still don't like the high, but I do it just to sleep. And so when I do get a panic attack, I eat something, and that really helps. That's a lot of panic attacks, though, 60 pounds? I mean, <laughs> that's some serious panic attacks. So tell me, how do you take it? Are you smoking wax? Are you doing cannabis? Because the caller earlier said four grams a day. Listen, I could puff four one gram joints in a day and never get like you just saw me. Ooh, I'm starting to feel a little better. And never get like you just saw me for the last 40 minutes. I could, I could smoke four big fat blunts all day long and never get like that. So you say you take it before bed. How do you take it and how does it affect you? I just take one good hit on my vaporizer. It's a little volcano vaporizer, and <clears throat> I guess I'm just a lightweight because ever since that panic attack, it's never been the same. I, I just don't enjoy it. So uh, I just do what I need. Uh, probably one hit in the evening. Uh, if I'm having, if I can't sleep, uh, you know. Okay, okay. But then again, if I do get a little. Okay, yeah. let me ask you this then, because. You're a rare bird, sir. Let me put you in the category where you don't use it every day like I do and like millions of us do. So let me ask you this in terms of you have a, you're in a special rare use category. First, let me ask you, when you say vaporizer, sir, do you mean, when you say volcano, do you mean you put the dried flower and fill up that bag or are you using like a vape pen with one of those big batteries like this? No, it's a... Uh... It's, it's a vaporizer. You plug in, you put the flower in it, and you turn it on to about 310, and <clears throat> it just it, it's just vapor, um, but it's it's not the little portable thing. Okay. Because so. I, I asked that because I'm going to put up a picture of, of something similar to what I think that you're talking about so everybody can kind of see. Now, this is a volcano vaporizer. It takes the flower like this. And from just like you see me smoking this bong week after week, it takes the flour and instead of heating it to this temperature, it heats it to whatever you program it at. And when you program it at about 375, it burns off the trichomes, but it doesn't smoke the flour. It doesn't burn the flour. And so in this case, you're smoking the trichomes, which is closer to like the yeah. wax you saw me smoke earlier. And then you're smoking... And then, but you're not burning the flour, so it's better for your lungs, and that's why you saw me smoking it weeks ago because my throat was hurting. So, yeah, same, same thing. Okay, so you smoke it like this. Now, the medical part of this, you say you smoke it occasionally. Give me an idea of roughly how often is occasionally. Well, it depends on my my stress level, I guess. It's it's I I can go for a month without smoking, and then sometimes I'll just have so much 
uh, stress buildup, anger, whatever, you know, driving the 405 here in California sometimes, <laughs> that's bad. Uh, I just, I can't sleep. My, my brain goes into overdrive. I start thinking about past issues. Uh, uh, Vietnam comes back, haunts me a little bit. Uh, just things that have happened in my past that, that, that won't stop. I just take one hit, and then all I can think about is maybe having an ice cream cone or something. I, I just, I can't stop thinking. And if I feel like I'm getting too high, I just eat something. And that's, that's, I'm just, you know, I guess I am rare. Uh, it, but I also found that growing it is really kind of a peaceful little hobby. <laughs> I hear that a lot from yeah. people. So first, let me take a step back and say, one, thank you for your service. I mean, we look back and everything we sacrifice is, gets us to where we are today. And the government's decisions have nothing to do with the individual people like you that it impacted. So first, let me say thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, it's, it's a thank you for what I've learned. My first grow was awesome. I'm on my second grow now. Uh, my girlfriend called you last week, and she, she's the one that ordered me the, the grow book and the whole package. And it just, everything is, is really good. It's, it's uh, I, uh, you know, right now I'm, I'm in a really a peaceful place, and I really haven't had to, to smoke that much. But my doctor at the time was making me these little two and a half milligram gel caps that uh, helped me. But I, since he's passed away, I've left Hawaii and moved back to California. So I'm trying to do this stuff all by myself now. I'm just in a big learning curve. And you've been really helpful, and I just wanted to say thank you. I appreciate that. Now, let me get back, if you don't mind, a little more to the medical side. i got to tell you, my, it is still spinning. When I close my eyes, it's like, oh, it's still spinning. Okay. When you say sometimes you like to, you, you get, you get, you have your anger issues, do you find yourself taking one hit of cannabis two or three nights in a row, four nights in a row, and then maybe you don't use it for a while, or is it maybe one and done? No, no, it's, it's, I'll do it three or four nights in a row. At one point, I probably did it for a month straight, and then I stopped for a month or two, and, and then it's just, you know, it's like know your body, I guess, and how I feel it. So, uh, yeah, if I can't sleep, it gets to be about 2 o'clock in the morning, I'll, I'll fire it up and take a hit. And then and within an hour, I'm, I'm out. That was my next question, within an hour. So tell me about the effects in the morning. Are you getting up, and how do you, when you get up, how do you feel? Well, I, I feel pretty good when I get up. Uh, if, if, if I get, you know, at least four or five hours of sleep, um, yeah, I have no different effect in the morning. I get up, have a cup of coffee and start my day. It's, it's pretty easy. It, it's really helped. It's, 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 uh, geez. It, it just makes life easy. It, 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 it's calmed me down. Um, I just had my coffee this morning, so I'm a little wired, but as it's, uh, it doesn't have an effect on me the next day. You know, it's a lot better than, uh, I, I did, uh, too much alcohol for too many years. <clears throat> and that kind of helped, but then it kind of, you know, ruined everything around it. So I, I quit quit alcohol about 14 years ago and didn't have anything to help me stay calm until my doctor put me back onto this. Did you, did you transition from alcohol to cannabis? No, no. I, I quit alcohol, and uh, I think that's the point when I started losing the weight and uh, not getting to sleep. I used to have to drink myself to sleep. So, uh, no, the cannabis came on, oh, uh, shoot, it's about 11 years after I stopped drinking is when I started the cannabis. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's, been a, it's been a good ride. But, yeah, the cannabis really helped in, in the... the you know, my first yield was was uh, more than I'll ever need, so I share it with my friend that has Parkinson's, um, and I just try to help people that, that I know really need it, and not just want to play and our party. 
And how's your cannabis experience going with growing it? Are you doing okay with growing it still? I'm, I'm loving it. My first yield, I, I, I did quite well. I uh, used a four, six bulb P5. And I was really impressed with, with how it turned out. And now I know I'm at least good for at least a year. And uh, I'm doing an outdoor now, and it's doing really well. And I just, you know, follow the rules. I don't know a lot about outdoor growing. I just gave it the 20 gallon cloth pots and, you know, good soil. <clears throat> but I'm not, I'm not a scientist. When I'm inside, you know, I, I follow, uh, like when I see the leaves turning to purple, I, I give it a little cow mag. Like, you know, I follow your rules pretty much, uh, pretty close. I don't overwater. I don't, uh, I'm not a salt farmer. I, I did one and three quarter pounds on my first grow with the four six bulb T5s. How much? Uh, one and three quarters pounds. Four six bulbs. Brilliant. No, wait, let's see. Um, yeah, 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 one and three quarters. Brilliant. Congratulations. I had to buy a new scale. <laughs> I did really well. I was really happy. You uh, should be very pleased uh, with Normally yourself. I probably would over... Yeah, yeah, so... I just, uh, then I, I, I make the oil, uh, and, and I put that in capsules. So if, uh, my girlfriend takes that. And tell me a little bit about I, how, I, you, tell me a little bit about the oil that you make for your girlfriend. Well, I decarboxylate it and then, you know, I top it up, decarb it. And then I use a uh, 91% alcohol as a solvent and, I put it in a rice cooker and I cook it down and I bring the oil and then I, I dilute that a little bit and make it more usable, workable with olive oil. And I just put those in the little gel caps and she takes one of those every day. And, and for her, is what's the reason that she takes it, if you don't mind? Um, well, when I started taking it, I, I didn't know what the heck it was doing to me. I just knew that I felt better. I wasn't super high. Uh, and I just, I started feeling better. My attitude started changing. Um, I was a lot easier to get along with. I started putting on a little weight. I was sleeping better as I take one at bedtime. And well, she has uh, type two diabetes. And I, I do know that her blood sugar is down. She hasn't had to take any metformin or any, any pain meds for it. Uh, I, to me, it, you know, somebody asked me at one point, what do you think it does? And I said, I don't know. It's like it filters my blood. <laughs> so it just made everything good. So she takes one a day. And it, well, yeah, about one a day. And uh, if it's too strong, she tells me, and I make some weaker. But, uh, you know, she, she's not usually high or anything. She just, she's feeling better, and she's off the, the diabetes medication. Congratulations. Yeah, it's, it's Congratulations. Good. Yeah. Congra Even if it's a placebo effect, it seems to be working. <laughs> there are so many people that tell me so many stories in so many directions. And it's, it's obviously not a placebo anymore because it's so many people from so many directions, it's beyond a rumor. And that was some fantastic information. And if you wouldn't mind, if I'm going to end the call, if that's okay with you. Yeah. And I want to say thank you. Yeah, for we're going to come out and see you soon, though. Oh, I appreciate you stopping by the store. Thank you so much. And first off, again, much respect and thank you, sir. And second, it's another story. And another story about how cannabis is just, how it doesn't even matter if it's good for us or not. It shouldn't be illegal. We shouldn't be paying to incarcerate anybody from it. There should be no stigma around it. I mean, it's pretty self-regulating, like for the last 55 minutes you've watched me have an anxiety attack and even though I thought I was feeling better 15 minutes ago my hands are still shaking it is not something I'm gonna do again anytime soon that's pretty self-regulating I mean it's
Yeah. Woo. It's 55 minutes later, probably 60 minutes later. Ah. Stop seizures, too. I hear that all the time, Shelly. Thank you. CBD stimulate endocannabinoid system, your endocannabinoid system, which regulates the immune system. It just, it just helps your body do what it's supposed to. Um, that's not, somebody's knocking. I can hear it through a wall. That's not me. All right, double check. All my systems are checked. Mic is go. Desktop audio is on. Um, all right, I'm going to take another caller. Let's see what happens. Stop. Hi, how are you? Good morning. You're on at the Grow Boss. Hey, Grow Boss. It's Buddy. I just woke up and I turned you on and I'm watching you have a panic attack. Yeah. And I'm like, Did you eat it? No. No, you want to know? I took three puffs off of wax. Oh, okay. Well, wait, 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 wait. You, not, you, not necessarily you, wax. Not necessarily wax. One of them was a wax pen with a glass stone. The other one was the glycol. It was wax with a little bit of glycol that you buy in any vape pen where you get the big cloud of smoke. Oh, no, no, no. If I had eaten it, oh, I would have, tried, I would have started a fire. I would have... Ah, it had been off the hook. I couldn't have done a show. The last time I tried to eat it, I tried to. I fired everybody, and I tried to burn the house down. I, mean, I wanted to burn the house down. Wanted to burn Don't the eat. house down, it's... not tried to burn the house down. And I actually did call and fire everybody. And then, like, you know, <laughs> half an hour later, I was better. But You know, I think when you did those, um, those hits today, that, you know, it's concentrated. It's a concentrated puff on a on a cannabis, you know, a flower. So you probably did freaking, uh, you know, twenty puffs worth of your normal hit, you know. But uh, hey, I, I got a question. Yeah, but I can smoke a whole With, joint. I can smoke a whole one gram joint to myself while reading a book. You know what? But that's not the same as concentrated uh, a THC in in the in the trichomes. It's not concentrated sift or hash or all that stuff because no matter what there's no flour and it's concentrated uh what you're smoking in the in a joint and it's like doing five joints in in, in a second so you, you got to be careful but, with it i like this but doing it's really joint not myself. though listen it's really not though and and i can tell you and i had commented about the crack in the beginning how the crack rather than you know you do crack you get high for 30 seconds super high and then you come down with cannabis, you sort of get a little high all day long when you smoke it. With the concentrate, dude, right. I've been high for the last hour. And I, I really think I'm only now starting to come down. Like, if I was going to watch this again later, um, I would yeah. clearly hear that right now my voice has changed into something different. And, <laughs> and I'm feeling a little better. My hands are a little less shaky. But that was an hour. So I would like to suggest that if we were going to smoke crack, that the high looks like this in terms of right. time and this being 50 in terms of time actually I'd like to suggest that that's not right in terms of time <laughs> I would like to suggest if this is one hour then crack works like this I was this high today and smoking cannabis like regular flowers is just sort of maintains like that you, you know and and so uh and this is crack. And so in terms of time, I would just like, dude, I don't know if I could have drawn that graph an hour ago. And so... Do, uh, but, but what you did, do you, do you feel like you want to have that feeling again? Oh, uh, I, 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 I wouldn't do it to myself. I wouldn't do it to myself. You just watched how, how, how unhappy I was for the last hour. Literally sat here... Well, then so... So the, the the point I was making, I, it's correct. It could be cannabis, but it, it you're getting such a high form of concentration that it's not fun anymore. 
and that's how I get when I eat it. I, I, I'll never eat it again. It just changes in my body, and, and I, I go through pain. I got a shower. I'm, I feel like I'm going to die, and it's just a horrible feeling. So, hey, I, maybe this should calm you down when you start thinking about helping someone growing. Um, I'm in a four-week flower with 10-gallon smart pots, and I'm deficient of my nutrients. I know I am. Because I went, I'm only like 338 on a ppm last feeding and watering, but I'm not watering for every six or seven days, and I got a couple more weeks of feeding, so maybe two or three more waterings with feed before I start flushing. My question is, if I did like 338 in week 11, can I? Get, what's the farthest ppm I could go up to so it it doesn't? Um, it's not deficient in magnesium and stuff without hurting the plant. I mean, I, if I stay with the chart, I'm going to be under when I flush it. If Should I bump it up to a number that I, w I wouldn't use, like five or six? Okay. Is that a, is when, you say, when you say you're at 338 ppm, how much light are you actually, how much light is in that space? 400 with a light mover. So I did 500. I did your math and your PPM calculator. And I'm in, I did a 16 week minus the three for the soil. So that's 13 weeks. I'm at week 11. So I did, you know, the calculations. It came out to 30.38 times 11. It gave me that 338 number. I hope I'm doing it with, right with your chart, right? Okay. I'll tell you that's why it. you're 100% right. And, and here's Thank why. You. My chart, I can't account for everything. And what he's talking about is the perfect PPM calculator. And in terms of the perfect PPM calculator, I think it's in here. So the perfect PPM calculator is based on, is based on week by week of the plant how much light you have and how long you're you're growing for because it's easy for a nutrient company to say oh 12 week schedule but frankly you just heard this guy say he's got an 8 week veg and we know that because he's in a 10 gallon in flower if you're in a ten, if you're in a 7 or 10 in flower that means you veg for 4 weeks into 1 gallon you veg for 4 weeks into a 3 gallon and then you went into flower into a 7 or a 10 because you wouldn't go from a 3 to a 5 so if you follow along the schedule and you're finishing with a 4 100 watt light then if you're on a 10 week schedule you'll do about 40 ppms a week week one you'll be at 40 ppm week two you'll be at 80 ppm week five you'll be at 200 ppm and so the next question that's a ppm target so it accounts for plant size veg time and the amount of light something none of the right. nutrient schedules do that's why it's so important that you understand the relationship between plant count, plant size, how long veg time is before you ever feed. That's why I tell you nutrients are worthless. Their yield is based on light and nutrients are only the calories that support that amount of light. If you're not going to the gym and working out, you don't get to eat as many calories as someone that's going to the gym and working out. Because if you're not going to the gym, you're going to put it on as body fat. If you are going to the gym, you're going to put it on as muscle. So that's the relationship between nutrients, less light, less nutrients. Now, the theory that I offer you, because I'm the guy who works behind the counter of a hydro store, the theory that I offer you is this. If you hit your plants with too many nutrients, it's going to take you a month to recover. And if it takes you a month to recover, your 16 week, that's eight in veg and eight in flower, your 16 week plant is going to be 20 weeks or five months old. It'll be 25% older, It'll also be 25% taller, which means it's gonna run into the light. And I always tell you, quality is based on grower talent. And if you have a mistake that costs you 25%, grower talent is to blame. Not the lights, not the equipment, not the nutrients, not anything else. So if you have a PPM schedule, now you know you should be feeding about 338. But that's suddenly giving you too few because you said you have a deficiency. So my observation yes. is, fuck, you could go up to five, 600. Because it sounds to me like you're feeding every eight or you're watering every eight or 10 days. How frequently are you watering? Every six to seven it is. I never take it that, that extra on the 10 gallon smart pot, you know, and, and, and um, I, I'd rather, 
be at the the end of the uh, where it needs water than where it really needs water because I feel if you dry it out then you're slowing down the whole process. So I I usually like to find where the first le- uh, wilting of the leaves are to know how far I could go. But I I'm doing seven days. Excellent. You know what too far is, and then you don't go that far because when you grow cannabis, you got to live in the gray area. You shouldn't be watering every day, and you shouldn't wait until the plant drops. So in your case, when I get a phone call like this where there's no problems, you're not complaining about chicken curled leaves from overwatering. You don't have any complaints about bugs. It's a finesse question where you're looking at how to be better. Um, It's a different kind of a conversation. So in this case... Um, all you would have to do is bump up the nutrients a little. So you don't want to water more frequently. So let's say you were watering 338 every four days. Well, then you would water 676 every, every gotcha. eight days. I've been, yeah, I've been, I've been doing every six to seven days, and I'm at 338 now, so if I, I'll bump it up to six. Hey, and here's my question. Should, like, there's a three-week flush, would it, would it be smart to flush with a mag sulfur product for a week or two and just finish with water then so you're keeping that mag in there? Okay, so there's a couple of components to what you just asked me. You just defined flush as a mandatory something that you have to do. I would like to suggest I got you. that if you were at the end of flower and you were nutrient deficient, for instance, in this case, you would get the 20 week. You would take the 20 week journal and you would be in week three flower and you would mark down on week three flower. You would mark down your PPMs down here and you would know how many PPMs you were at. Then next time you did this, since you're trying to do the exact same thing, next time you did this, you would go ahead and be like, oh shit, you would up the PPMs two weeks earlier. You might even up the PPMs 10% going back four weeks. What I'm suggesting I is, got you. is that the information that you have this time is going to improve your performance next time. Like why would you wait to increase the PPMs now when you know that that today's, I was short. Prob- today's problem started two weeks ago. So next time you have to resolve it two weeks. And you know you're right because you even say in your in your in your books that uh, um, you shouldn't really have to flush if you did it right. If you're a salt farmer, then yeah, you got to spend a lot of time to get it all out. But I'm so under that I bet it would burn white and clean and all that stuff. So, all right, I think that'll help. I can I could bump up my uh, PPM now for the last couple feedings. Uh, I'll get up to five or six. It should help it, and then I should be fine. And um, hey, uh, boss. When you uh, um, when you did your dabs today, here's what you do. Can you pack in maybe like a do like one of them ten gram dabs right now? I want to really watch you freak out. <laughs> oh, I'm teasing. Yeah. All right. I appreciate that call, and and for him, the final thing that I always tell you guys about the flush is that if nutrients don't have anything to do with weight yield or quality then what's the point in having too many the correct amount is the is the lowest amount possible that's going to get you max yield even when we look at the great root race over here um i'll tell you something okay let me turn on this okay so i should be on this mic now grow boss grow boss check check okay this was the great root race. We're about 38 days into it. It's been over for a week and it has absolutely been abandoned in the store. We pretty much just water them now. We pretty much just water these things now, okay? And what I want you to notice is that these were the products that we tested. Nothing Clonex Solution Myco Chum from Great White, Great White Powder. Great White with Myco Chum. Orca, Orca with Mycochum, Roots by Humboldt Nutrients, um, Green Fuse, Green Pad, and then the two mystery trays, which I'm not going to tell you until the last series is put out. But, but, what I want you to notice is this. We went from no nutrients to Clonex Solution, and then everything else got Clonex Solution. 
And you'll notice that none of them really got bigger, taller, taller, taller than the Clonex solution tray. So these are the base nutrients, like the Clonex solution, this stuff. These are the base nutrients that are going to get you there. Get that shit right and everything else is going to be okay. But I can tell you that the great white tray are stiffer. And the Clonex and the, and the green pad tray, the plants are not only stiffer and stockier, but they've got probably the second thickest roots. The mis this mystery tray ended up of the whole thing, this mystery tray ended up having both the thickest plants and the thickest uh, roots. But just by its self product, the green pad by itself, CO2, nothing added more to the roots than CO2. It turns out, but until you do this many iterations, who could possibly know? I mean, the great white tray is looks fantastic. It looks I mean, the, let's just say that this, that this is the tray that got Clonex Solution only. This tray looks fantastic. This tray got Clonex Solution and Great White because every tray got Clonex Solution because you need the food. This got Clonex Solution and Great White. And it looks fantastic and it's thicker. And the plants are, are, are more thicker. <laughs> Same thing down here, literally. Some of them have denser leaves, bigger leaves. Some of these products have had bigger roots and different side effects. So there are lots of different ways. Okay, let me just make sure. Okay, mics, desktop, wireless. Uh, mic, check, check. Okay, there are lots of ways that you can... Uh, that you can, there are lots of things to learn when you do many iterations. That's why one of the favorite things I always talk to you about is, uh, is the three light rotation. Because if it takes you 30 days to veg and 60 days to flower and you have one light, it takes 90 days per harvest. So you can only get four harvests per year. If you only get four harvests per year, you only see four iterations per year. But if you have a two light rotation, you get a harvest every 60 days. If you get a harvest every 60 days, you get six iterations per year. If you get, if you have a three light rotation, you get a harvest every month. So you get 12 iterations a year. So if experience is what you're looking for, that's why when you guys come in, I tell you, how do I know what the best product is? I have no idea what your intentions are. Some people want to learn how to grow cannabis. You want to learn how to grow cannabis, you should buy three 400 watt eight bulb nickel city bad boy t5s you should watch my three light rotation videos because they literally go over the difference in in light because if you have one 1000 watt light then you're going to get a pound and a half in 90 days 30 day veg 60 day flower but if you have a four 600 combo you still have a thousand watts worth of light but now you get a harvest every 60 days but instead of a thousand in flower you have 600 in flower which means you're going to get a pound every 60 days but a pound every 60 days is a half a pound a month and a half a pound a month is a pound and a half in three months so i don't care if you have one 1000 a six four hour six four hundred combo it's the same shit all the way around Even if you have three 400 watt lights, a 400 watt light is a half pound. If you have a 200 watt veg and a 400 watt flower, you get a half pound every 60 days. But if you have three lights, two in flower and one in veg, you get a yield every 30 days. If you have three, three 400 watt lights, you get a half pound every 30 days, but you get faster iterations rather than pay big money to cool equipment like, to cool, to cool hot equipment like these ballasts. Um... Okay, so this, this, um, like these ballasts right here. Like I had somebody come in and sell me, oh, I'll tell you a story. Okay, so let me, um, I, let me do this. Oh, okay, I should be able to turn, turn this, this on, on Grow Boss, Grow Boss. Boss. And then turn this mic off check check this mic should be on check check my used mic should be on check check um okay um, 
Oh, the Bushmasters grow. I'll tell you in a sec. 815, I'll take your call in a minute. So let me know if this mic's, if this mic's a problem. But I'll tell you a story. So 49-year-old MILF comes in the store, right? And super adorable. She's, got, she's ready to start growing. Somebody owed her some money. She's decided to take their equipment in, in payment. And she comes in with four double-end hoods and a giant and a giant filter that she's ready to start growing. And I was like, do you know what you have? And she said, no, but this one doesn't even have the cord. So she brings in four 1000 DE hoods and she's growing. She wants to be just a little gangster, wants to grow pound a month, brings in four DE hoods, doesn't have any ballast, doesn't have any bulbs, has this supersized inline fan and 4,000 watt DE hoods, no ballast, no bulbs. And she wants to know what it's gonna start, what it's gonna get, what it's gonna cost to start growing. Well, I said, if you use this equipment, it's gonna cost an enormous amount of money and you still haven't bought the AC. And, and so you're, you're going to have to buy an AC. So what she ends up leaving with is, is what I usually sell you guys. And that's like a four foot eight bulb T5 cheap like this, or a nickel city bad boy, if you want the best T5s out there. And so it just depends on your buy-in, but we have eight bulbs like these. So what I do is I, I, the same thing you see on the one, two, three light rotation. We put one of these by three, four by four tenths, by three lights, put one in each, and that's a half pound a month when you know how to grow. And then if you want to expand, you just add a second one in each tent. And now you've got eight of these. And that's a pound a month with a house AC. That's why I always tell you guys, you have to start where you want to finish in terms of yield and work your way back. And so, I got some DE hoods at the store here, super cheap, and this giant, <laughs> this giant like 12 inch fan. Um, we sold an eight inch in lot, that six inch super fan that was here last week. I got rid of, oh, see this one down here? This one down here, remember how I pulled that one off the top of it? Ah, I got rid of one of those for 60 bucks with a bulb, a little 250 water. Oh my God, I was so happy to get rid of that. All right, listen, before I start the last hour of the show, this mic on, check, check. All right, before I start the last hour of the show, you guys are going to have to give me one minute because sitting here for two hours is too much for me. So... Oh, gee, you love that I talk about the used equipment. Oh, yeah, Dave, Mr. Weens by a T5. Why so many different mics? Technically, I have seven mics. There's one mic on each camera. There's this mic that I wear because I walk into the store to show you guys stuff. And there's this mic that I talk into because this doesn't pick up well enough when I'm sitting here, but it's good enough for me to walk in the store. And while I appreciate all the comments about... uh about I should do this in HD. I got to tell you, I don't need to be in HD. This this video doesn't need to be in HD. You don't need to watch me in HD. That's creepy. So, um, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and... Uh, 
So we're going to go ahead and I'm not upgrading this equipment anymore. I will learn how to use it better. I believe that uh, I can do the best show possible with the equipment I have. And look, man, I've even got this close-up cam dialed in so I can write on it while I talk. I mean, it's pretty good, right? Like, it's not too bad for doing this, like, week after week. Um, better weight music. Oh, come on, man. I mean, that's really, that's, that's kind of picky. Like, you're looking for better weight music. The first hour of the show, I had an anxiety attack. Like, <laughs> you can come at me sideways with weight music? Oh, come on. Uh, yeah, what do you need HD for, man? Oh, I know what you need HD for, right? You need HD for uh, porn and sports. Hmm. Makes you wonder, hear that beep? Makes you wonder if I just lost the camera or... Um, no. Nope, doesn't look like I lost the camera. Um, A15, I think I'm going to skip your call for the minute. Um, I think you and I... Yeah, I'm going to skip your call for a minute. Uh, I'm feeling... Uh, Woo! I am feeling so much better. Wow! <laughs> I am feeling so much better. And if you're just joining me, this is Cannabis Hotline. You can call in with questions, 84 Grow Boss. We can talk about cannabis, the medical side of cannabis. But literally for the last 80 minutes, you've just watched me had, have an anxiety attack. It's, uh, it's crazy, the difference between smoking cannabis, eating cannabis, all the different ways you can process cannabis. Ooh. Man. <clears throat> okay, let's see. Are there any good comments? Great video, just subbed. I have a question for you. If I can email you, that would be nice. Yeah, sure. Check this out. This is how I answer these emails. Okay, so I have this cannabis hotline where you can call me. So, what I let you go, uh, videos are always free. Let's, let's try, I'm trying to be better at being super nice. So, better at being super nice. So, thanks for watching my vids. Thanks for watching. Vids are always free. My time, however, is not. If you read my videos, um, if you want personal answers you can sign up for a console here let's do this we'll put this at the end thanks for watching um, yeah yeah here's our thing thanks for watching yeah I mean I get like a thousand of these things a day and so I'm like Sometimes they'll sign up, which is fine. An hour out of my life is a long time. I'm super busy to, to stop and sit on a phone call with somebody. Uh, you know, and so... All right, let me take a phone call. We'll get back to this. Hi, right, you're on with the Grow Boss. Hello, Grow Boss. How are you feeling now? <laughs> uh, I'm feeling sort of vulnerable. Can I get a hug? Thank you so much. <laughs> there you go. Hey, this is the uh, the cancer dude that you helped out with, and uh, I got my first harvest in. I'm on a three light rotation, and I'm just now starting to add CO2. I uh, was wondering, can you get an upper limit on CO2 before passing out? <laughs> yeah, it's about fifteen hundred. The plant just can't move any faster. CO2 gets you 25% more growth. 
So that means everything the plant is doing is 25% more. You really can't push the plant beyond that because there's only light, water, and CO2. That means if you add more CO2, the plant's going to require, it's going to go through more water and it's going to want more light. In terms of that, you really can't go anything beyond that. Just like you saw with these plants over here, once you hit that certain growth limit, other aspects start to change. So when you start to add CO2, the aspects of the plant that are going to change is more root, denser, thicker plants. That's what we learned by doing it. Like one of the things we learned from doing it like this. And from there, I mean, all you can do then is enjoy yourself. Don't push the limits. All you can do is like just like where i started the conversation with the intensity of people in the united states always trying to win there comes this point where you have to recognize that this is the best that it's ever going to get and if you can make this look good the longer you can make it look good the overall better the results are see what i'm saying yeah i've always been told that it's not the equipment it's the uh talent you know you, uh, you a car a good carpenter doesn't blame his tools for shoddy work <laughs> that's right all right i want to just say thanks so much for this call let me run into one more call now hi you're on with the grow boss what can i do for you hey how's it going um, i am very new to uh this uh for cannabis growing i was just wondering what would be the best literature i guess uh kind of break it down for somebody who probably doesn't have a green thumb at all uh, to learn about this okay let me say thanks so much for the call I'm gonna answer that call off the air and I can't believe you're gonna call the grow boss and ask what the best literature is let me think hmm what's the best literature that you could buy what could be the best literature if you were to buy some sort of literature that you could buy what might be if you were a new grower trying to learn how to grow with the fewest mistakes possible what literature could you buy at the growboss.com with the no more grow more cards because literally I know every problem you're gonna have before you have them uh, what literature could you buy where could you go to get literally answers to every question growers ask with charts that explain everything that you need to know to grow? I mean, from vendors like Mondi, check these charts out. And from Nickel City, how much light you need. And if you keep listening to this show, You'll see what I mean, but when I tell you that it's all about grower talent and the equipment. I don't really care what nutrients you buy. I don't really, where could you go to get all that information? Oh, here's another book. <laughs> like literally, I already know every problem you're gonna have. Like the question is, Name three positions for a charcoal filter. Boom. You know, there's three positions, pushing, pulling, and recirculating. There are root questions. Best roots, how to do best roots. I make fun of you. Oh, I make fun of the problems you're gonna have because I already know. How to get rid of spider mites. What causes this and how does it progress? like garden hotline boom like i already have this 90 count deck of cards for every problem you could have why because i've been stuck behind the counter of a hydro because i worked behind the counter of a hydro store for almost 10 years and i'll tell you i've read every book out there i read almost all of them before i wrote my book the grow book and equipment guide i've read every book because literally, you read, you do all the research, you take your notes, and then based on what's valuable and what's not, you create a book based on that information with your own insight, so you're not taking any information from anybody else. And I'll tell you what I learned from reading every other book 
out there. They have exactly zero to do with indoor growing. See this equipment in my hydro store? See all that equipment, all those nutrients? See, see all this used equipment? See all the sponsors behind me? Made you look. See all that equipment? All that's indoor growers. So when you guys come in or people come in and they're like, oh my God, we're looking to grow some tomatoes. I'm like, yeah, you're in the wrong store. I got nothing for you. But do you have, no, I don't have any answers for you. But do you, no, if you're, no one spends $1,500 to grow tomatoes. So why even bother with those customers? So <laughs> I didn't mean it like that, but I guess it's sort of true. Why, why? So I sort of run them out the store. I'm really a destination store. Like if you're walking by from one of the other stores and you come in here, I already know you don't belong here. So this store is a certain group of people, class of people, a certain type of person like me that comes in stores like these. So if you sort of look outside this, you know, outside that, it's sort of, I will say that the consumer shift has been significant toward couples, older couples, and 60 to 75 year old females. I have sold more two three light rotations to 60 to 75 year old females in the last year than in the entire nine years before that. So the consumer market changes too. The, the type of lights we sell. You know, 10 years ago, we never would have had this many of these used on the floor because that was mostly all we sold. I really started telling people about the T5s and how they grow and how they're more appropriate for the home grower than the big lights. So there's been an enormous shift in the consumer market as well. And so after I read all these books, I, I, I was like, you know what? This has nothing to do with what's, behind, with what's going on at a hydro store. And, and at that point, I decided to, every time customers came in, I squirreled away as soon as they left all of their questions. I squirreled away all of their problems. And I categorize them and organize them and I put them into a format where one answer is like, if this, then this. And when you look at my book, I literally have, if your plants look like this, then it's this. And I went through every other book and there was nothing. I mean, who the fuck cares what nitrogen does? If your plants have the right amount of food because you're feeding them appropriately, who cares what the bottle is? All the nitrogen's the same. All the P's the same, all the K's the same. Right? I mean, we're talking about a few specific products that actually benefit. We're talking about things like microbes, Clonex, the right amount of Clonex solution, CO2. We're talking about like root accelerators, like green fuse that blow up the roots for chemical triggers. These are real things. Not if you overwater and your plants are sick and shitty. But these are, these are, you know, some real things. These are real tools that we demonstrate. But these are the skills that go into growing. This is the second time I've done the Great Root Race. If I did a third time, I would be, I would be even better at this. So I read all the other books. I'm working at a hydro store. And I said, yes, there is absolutely nothing here that answers any questions that goes inside my store. I've even read Three Light. Like, super beautiful book. Beautiful. Beautiful. Has nothing to do with the questions that come in through my hydro store. They show you how to clone. They all show you how to clone. They, there's a million videos that show you how to clone. Mine is the only book that is based on the simple philosophy that if you don't fail, you'll automatically win to various degrees, depending on how bad you don't fail. But what I specifically do in my book What I specifically do in my book is I go through all of the questions that you guys have in a hydro store that you come through here. I address all of the problems that you have because it took me literally like three months to run through 98% of the problems and they were all in my first book. I have since expanded and gotten much better at writing so the book is more readable. But I've since gotten much better and the book is far more appropriate and smoother to read. 
but the essential 98% of questions that you guys come through have been in there from the beginning. We've added new pictures. Beginning of next year, we're going to have probably what's going to be the final grow book ever come out. There's one more edition, um, and that'll probably capture everything because since I've started writing this book, I probably added 2% more questions because the industry hasn't changed. Probably the silliest thing you guys come in here and say is, oh, I did this years ago and technology has changed so much since. I go, technology has changed. The T fucking five light and a thousand watt HID. The fuck has changed? You've gotten 20 years older, sir, like I have. But in terms of technology, you could have grown 20 years ago and I don't believe you were successful. I had a customer come in yesterday that, tell me that, that tells me they know how to grow. They come in here and they want to know GH farm kits and these bucket kits for DWC. This guy has a 3x3 three three 400 watt, nope, yes, 3x3 three three 315 CMH light with a 4x4 four four and 1600 LED. Seven, 1600 LED. He's got one bucket in veg. He's going to buy five of these things because he's got one bucket in veg and four in flour. And so he's going to grow a mother plant. So I said, I said, if you grow a mother plant, how are you going to go into flour if you've got a veg in a flour tent? So he says, well, he's going to veg in the veg tent. So I said, how do you have four buckets in the veg tent? How are you going to veg and veg? You've got one mother. And he goes, oh, I didn't think that. Because I'm like, you got four buckets in flour, right? So if you, you have to have... I mean, if you're going to take clones, that's fine, but then know that you're going to veg for four weeks in the flower tent, and then you're going to flower for eight weeks, so you're not going to get a harvest. And he's like, no, I'm going to veg in veg tent. So he's like, listen, I've grown years ago. I know how to do this. So I said, perfect. I just, and so I sold him a bunch of shit, and he wants to know how, what nutrients. I go, look, dude, I've got no answer for you because you are on a 100% track to failure. And as we're talking, what he comes up with is, oh, um, I've already run through this once somewhere else, and I'm looking to do it again. He now has two LEDs, 600 watts for his 4x4 tent, because it went so well last time, he's going to use twice the light, because he didn't think they were as big as they could, because he's got a 600 watt light, and he got like, I think it was like four or six ounces. So we know he doesn't know how to grow. We know he doesn't understand the system that he's using. We know he has no idea what he's talking about because of the claims that he makes. And we know that he was not successful years ago because he doesn't even, I mean, there's no, there's no part of the story that has anything to do with anything. So I said, look, just buy whatever equipment you want. I'm not the guy to ask because you're the one who's winning. So I take all his money and I give him my book. Um, yeah, so he was pretty much back trying to return the shit 24, 36 hours later, whatever it was. Yeah, I don't take stuff back like that. I mean, you buy it, you buy it, it's yours. I'm not very good with the return policy. So I'm like, look, I'm not, he, I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna work with you on trying to do this because there's no way, there's no part of this that I can make work. I mean, you're just on a track of failure. So asking me how to make the best of a worse situation, I mean, the guy wants a half a pound a month. I mean, he's going to have to entirely switch the system and go from there. And so all I'm suggesting is that growing the cannabis, you don't have to know how to grow cannabis. All you have to do is not kill your shit. That's going to get you at least high quantity high yield and from there mostly if you don't kill your shit um you end up successful um yeah mostly it's uh all you have to do is not fail to grow cannabis the number is 84 grow boss i am feeling so much better but i do think i'm starting to come down off of it like that guy had said like that caller had said and where I had thought 45 minutes later it's twice that at an hour and a half so I think I'm like starting to come off my uh, the whole high from that thing you know why I think I know I'm starting to come off because the bong with some cannabis and it's starting to look good
Sure that it is probably. So <coughs> <coughs> So if you have any questions about growing cannabis or you want to call in and talk about overindulging in cannabis, today would be a great day to do it. My number is 84 Grow Boss, and we can talk about anything you want about cannabis. Um, and, you know, a lot of people tell me that I hate LEDs and that I talk shit about LEDs, and that's 100% not true. I like LEDs. I think they're fantastic. I don't think they have anything to do with growing cannabis, or at least they're appropriate in very few situations. Because you look on eBay, and I have people all the time that come in here, and they've got, like, they buy an LED tent, like combo on eBay. And they come in, and they've got a hydro tank, and they buy, oh, my favorite. Hey, you got six three-inch net cups? You're going to go to Walmart, and you're going to buy that tub where you put the, all six of net pots together? That's another spectacular fail. And I know there's all of these ways that you guys think you can grow cannabis, and you can. There's, you, can you can cannabis in all sorts of ways. What I talk about is a probability of success based on a thousand growers a year that come through my store. What's the probability of success? What's the probability of you having no idea how to drive and getting in a $400,000 sports car and not spinning it out into traffic and totaling it? We see it happen in YouTube videos all the time. What do you think the process of you not knowing how to drive and crashing, the, the, the statistical probability of you not knowing how to drive and crashing a high horsepower car? I think it's just about 100%. And I think that applies to what we were talking about earlier in the video, and that is you can easily overdo it. One day in your life is what, like 12 weeks to a cannabis plant. It is a very slow process, and if you change your mind even twice, while growing cannabis. You're gonna kill your shit with too much attention. And from that perspective, what I tell you is the less you do, the more you get. And you guys all the time on YouTube, oh my God, Grow Boss just trying to sell shit, Grow Boss such an ass, Grow Dude, what do I sell? My books, the information? I give it to you free in the videos. Some people like books, I love books, I'm a reader. And also, I like to take things in in different formats. That's why I have these No More Grow More cards. Because when I'm on the shitter, I like No More Grow More cards. When, you know what I mean? Like when I'm sitting somewhere and I wanna read a book, I wanna read a book. When I'm out traveling and I'm using data, I watch videos. I like to hear it in several different formats. Eight, hey, 831, give me one sec and I'll be right with you, okay? You got it. Okay. So I like to hear it in several different formats. So when you guys tell me that um, I, I'm selling my shit or I'm too mean, listen, the YouTube character that I, I play, the, the Grow Boss character that I play on YouTube, it's one directional. You need to take the information and hear it. And because I'm dealing with a specific demographic that is super intense, 18 to 49 year old, dumb, stupid, aggressive male that believes the more you do, the more you get. And even when you're told to back off, you don't know how what that even means or how to do it. All I'm suggesting is that the tendency is to do too much. And that if you want to get more, in this particular case, it's a plant, the less you do, the more you get. And it's counterintuitive. And that's why I say so many people fail. And that's why when you look at my used equipment pile, there are no four foot eight bulb T5s. Because statistically, that home growers that use certain equipment and behave certain ways, dumb, stupid, aggressive males that do too much and mochi your plant, those are the ones that fail. So right away, if you're the kind of guy that did enough research that you bought an LED with a tent and you spent $900 to get the wrong size tent and the wrong light, all I'm suggesting is that you're probably the kind of person that has a whole bunch of other significant traits that go along with that. And I would just like to say that based on the character I chose to behave on YouTube, when I make my videos, a one directional character that is super aggressive, 
somewhat insulting. I believe that based on the demographic of aggressive male that I was marketing to, that I had no other decision, no other choice than to play that character. Because if I came off meek and I said please and thank you, nobody would take me seriously. Plus, dude, if I come off as a dick, you guys bitch about me on the forums I hear. Brilliant. Listen, you guys do so much marketing for me. It's spectacular. Remember, as soon as you get on a forum and, for, forum and you say the grow boss is a dick, 50% of the people say, who's the grow boss? And why is he a dick? And then they type in grow boss and then they find me. And the reality is, I'm the guy with the answers. This industry is 50 years old and it took my dumb ass to make graphs for everything, take the problems, lay it all out so you could play it out, right? I mean, you see the graphs, they're not in any other book. I've read every other book and they're not in there. I had to make them because every other book had absolutely nothing to do with the problems that I encounter in my hydro store. All right, caller, what can I do for you? Sorry about that. Yeah, I just want to say, man, you do a great job. You get straight to the point and you tell the lay how it is. But uh, I just have some quick questions on uh, Las Vegas uh, cannabis industry laws right now. Okay, so... Like jumping over from Cali sure. to Vegas. Okay. What's your... Oh, I listen. The government doesn't even know what the laws are. It's federally illegal. It's legal in California. It's not legal. At one state, the state, what, some states sued Colorado because all the dope from Colorado was going into whatever state was next to Colorado. Uh... Huh? I don't even remember what state it was, but they were suing Colorado because the dope flow from Colorado was going into the state next door. So in terms of what's legal, don't get caught banging and they won't catch you slanging. All I'm saying is if you're growing, don't have people come to your house buying. And if you're buying, don't grow where people are coming to your house. The first guy that gets busted, the nail that sticks up, gets hit with the hammer first. So I really couldn't speak to what specific laws are. You can, it's $500. Yeah, um, this, Go on. Uh, this, it was just on uh, starting a collective there, really, the question. Um, I, I got to tell you, the government, I consider the government to be so corrupt that I believe that if you look at the government the way it is, that their goal is to string out illegality and keep it in turmoil for as long as possible. So, for, so... 50, 60 years ago, right? The cigarette, 80 years ago, 50, 60, 80 years ago. Tobacco and alcohol industry, they figure there's three vices, tobacco, alcohol, and marijuana. I mean, you can't really have people on opiates or cocaine on the street. So cocaine went away, opiates go away, like Coca-Cola, stuff like that. Opiates go away, snake oils go away. And now we're left with tobacco and alcohol, the two big vice industries. Sex, but still it's federally regulated so they narrow it down and now fewer people are in a greater control so from the government's perspective they can ignore the problem and they can distract us with other stuff like abortions and legislation and taxes and all sorts of shit that's not fukushima because i would like an answer about fukushima yeah. and how this shit's being solved anyway so now that we're in turmoil think about lawyers who who get a bad rap. Lawyers are fantastic. But we put them in the position to have to litigate stupid things. Why is divorce in any way a legal manner? Manner. I mean, matter. It should be private custody. When you get divorced, you go to your own fucking court and pay your own bills. Why, are, why, why is there anything? Why is the government of any involvement in that? So from my perspective, the government loves turmoil because we're distracted from the real things like immigration and pollution and 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 discrimination against anything and everybody. There's never been in a time we're here in the United States as a people. We have come together more to battle immigration, discrimination, sexism, LGBT, racism. I mean, we're coming on a generation that we have never ever seen before where God damn it, everybody wants to be the best they can be. And it's not just the United States because I tell you guys, in China, they're great at making stuff cheap. And in Jap Japan, the Japanese people, they're, making gr they're great at making great stuff. And in the United States, we're great at innovation. I mean, Europe has a culture that's thousands of years old. And they're going through changes right now, too. 
and we're all becoming regions. I mean, listen, Canada and the United States are two different countries, but pretty soon our whole continent and other continents are so I mean, there's there's so much potential for people here that I think that the distraction that they put upon us to not to not help us achieve the best humanity can be. I think all of those things are just distractions for us. And it drives me friggin' crazy because I believe humanity is on the verge of a huge step, not only in relations between people. I mean, there is no other animal that's as vicious or as compassionate as a human. And I believe that we in no way are taking advantage of those strengths as a society there are few people that are pulling us forward and it seems like almost everybody is dragging us down with the lowest common denominators so when we talk about the legalization man they don't even know i believe they want us in turmoil so we're wasting our time talking about what can and can't be instead of what we can be doing. I mean, the last great voice that I ever heard, and it was before me, was Kennedy, who gave the nation a goal. God damn it, we the people! And so, yeah. I, I don't know what to say about why the government, it's too many chefs. There is no leadership. See, I like Donald Trump. I understand exactly what he's saying. I grew up in Brooklyn. He's got a mouth, but when you look behind, beyond it, the things that he says, were spectacular but but he didn't run the government like he does the apprentice like donald trump was fantastic on the apprentice i learned more about business from the apprentice than i did from five years in business school well five years in college is three years in business school i learned more from him watching the apprentice about doing business than in all of business school i learned more about the business no you can't use my bathroom if the credit card doesn't work the first time i'm not going to try it a second time because it's a scam so I've learned more about these things than doing business. Than, and all I know is if we had this much leadership in my store, it would fail. And so I think when you talk about the laws, I, I think that we're going to have to replace a government that's 65 plus with a government that's 35 to 55 that more accurately represents people like us. People like us that look back and go, why the fuck did we fight these wars and risk our people? Why aren't we doing more for our veterans? Why are we in the wars that we're in now? And so I believe that the government wants to keep us pigeonholed like this. We're distracted by all these details because until some official stands up and tells me what's happening with Fukushima, it's over for the country. I mean, even if you stop Fukushima today, the, it took five years for the radiation to get here. We got five more years of radiation coming. And if we get another tsunami yeah. that takes the radiation off the shores, the fuck is that radiation going to go? It's all going to go into the water, and it's all going to go to Zuma, and it's all going to go to Topanga Canyon, and up the Washington coast, uh, up Oregon. And so I, from a perspective thing, it would seem like they would if the government was a business could you imagine not look at amazon not only do they find answers for problems look at the amazon dog park in the news recently all right i'm a, i think i got your question but i'm going to take this call off the air thanks for answering look at the amazon dog park they let their people come to work and if they happen to work longer hours and they're more productive for it who benefits so here's amazon not catering to the lowest common denominator why isn't our government, I mean, why isn't there a school where we pluck the smartest out and teach them how to be the smartest? I mean, you don't have to worry about jobs coming in other countries. There is always a demand for talented people. Even in emergency situations, there is always a demand for talented people. What in our nation, where in our nation is there anything where talented people are being encouraged by the government? Where is, where do those things happen? All right, so it's going to be time for me to open up my store soon. This is Cannabis Hotline. I think I've got time for one, one more phone call if somebody wants to get in on it. Otherwise, I'm just going to sit here and come down from that awful high experience that I had and just be super pleased with myself oh no i had that problem i was going to say i'm super pleased because i had no problems on the show but i did run that video that was in the background over my voice so 
Son of a bitch. I almost had a perfect show except for the first hour and 20 minutes where I had an anxiety attack. <laughs> and that part where the video overrolled my voice. Mm -mm -mm. I used to do a radio show where I was like, I was the IT guy. And if I couldn't answer your question, you might have to call Bill Gates. Because I was a network engineer, Microsoft System Certified, Microsoft Trainer, Novell, Cisco. Solving computer problems is just like solving people problems. Listen, there's only 10 problems networks have. There's only 10 problems that people have when they, when they call 911, including the fake ones. There's only 10, there's usually only 10 problems. If you know those 10 problems, you got 98% of whatever the fuck it is you're trying to do. Ow. You're on at the Grow Boss. Hey, Grow Boss, you had the perfect show today. I appreciate it. Uh, I enjoyed it a lot. I appreciate it. Hey, uh, so you're from New York. You're the perfect New Yorker, and you made it to uh, Las Vegas. That's perfect. Hey, I have a question. I've got a... Um, a two by six closet and have the uh, um, inline carbon filter fan at the top and it's four inch, you know, uh, duct blowing out of the closet outside. My question is, I have a light rail. Is there, is it possible to run CO2 under the leaves as it's being sucked out? Is there any way that it even works? Or it's not, you know, it's not going to work. Okay, I appreciate the call. I'm going to take this call, this answer off the air. And yeah, what I tell you guys is, if you want to vent, because you have to, that's great. Try to vent the least amount of air possible. And if you're going to, in fact, in fact, if you're going to vent through CO2, if you're going to do venting, then I have a whole series of videos that shows you, including... Hi, I'm the Grow Boss. Baha, that's me, I'm the Grow Boss. Including we do smoke tests so you can see the flow rate of how, of how this stuff works. So here's, I show you how much air is actually moving with these smoke tests. And literally, I smoke test these things on tables. And that's why I tell you to use the smallest fans possible. But if you're going to do it, the trick is to put the smoke on the far side of the tent from the vent. That way, your, uh, that way your plants have the best chance to absorb the CO2. Because if you suck cool air in from here and you suck hot air out from here, the air goes across your tent. But it actually sort of goes up and over. It doesn't mix in this lower corner down here in a tent. So you'll see in the videos how I demonstrate that. That's why the fan that you put in the tent to blow the air around homogenizes the air inside the setup. So, um, Um, all right, so let's see, let's, let's go ahead and block this guy because I don't need some racist shit on my site. I appreciate the other guy who has a comment for it. So I just went through and I blocked homeboy. That was the first time I tried to ever do that because listen, we're all equal. We're not the same. That's some government brainwash shit where there's no first prize. Listen, I don't want you to be the same as me. I don't care what nationality you are. You know what? I like you guys being all different so much. I can tell you how different you are when you guys shop. Mexican. Mexicans solve one problem at a time. They buy stuff one item at a time. They literally come in here and they'll tell you a problem. You'll put the thing on the counter. You'll walk them over to in the store. And they'll like solve the problem. They'll pay for it. And then they'll go, you know, I got one more question. Oh, my God. African-Americans. Each thing we negotiate on a price. And then when so each item is the lowest price possible. And then when we get up to the counter, after they negotiated the lowest price, they look at you and they go, hey man, if I do this for cash, what do you really charge me? And I'm like, dude, they got me twice. They got me to negotiate on each individual item. And then on the thing, okay, Asians, dude, Asians, 
want everything brought up to the counter so you can show them so like they're like ask a question and then you're like you walk into the store to show them something and you look back and they're still at the counter you got to bring it to them Dude, white people are the worst customers sometimes oh my god they're they want they want everything every other nationality they have every idiosyncrasy possible and yet I gotta tell you, they're all great customers. They all have the same questions. It's always the same problems. It doesn't matter if it's two chicks that come in my store, two dudes that come in my store, 60 to 79 year old ladies, 18 to 49 dumb, stupid, aggressive males, Mexican, black, white, Asian. They all have the same questions. It's awesome. I, I mean, it's, it's spectacular. Everybody, and that's what I mean like, Everybody's caught up in everybody else's fucking problems. But if you look at the best of each individual style, I mean, everybody copies everybody's style. Everybody's going to end up being a goo fucking back like from, from South Park with the gray heads because black culture intermingles with white culture and Asian culture is intermingles with both of them and we're all here and we're all doing the same thing. And we shouldn't be in everybody's business and the government shouldn't be in our business. I mean, that's the best thing about the United States. It right there says we're all equal. We've all got equal footing. And from there, you get to show us how spectacular you are. It takes some cultures longer to catch up. It takes some cultures quicker to integrate. Some cultures don't want to integrate at all. But they do want to come to the United States because we fucking kick ass. Because freedom costs a buck oh five. <laughs> the United States is the best. Yeah, the United States is great. Every country has fantastic things about them. I wouldn't want to live in every, any other country. But in terms of evolution, the United States is 250 years old. When we look at uh, Generation Y, Generation X, the Millennials, we look at the Ritalin kids from behind all of that. We look at the new ones. I mean, all of these have different traits. Social media, they said, would keep us apart, but it doesn't. It keeps us all interested. It makes us all smarter. We have so many inputs for information now. Social media, the lone wolf. I mean, she walks around with, her, with a podcast in her ear, has a conversation with you, and is doing something on her phone that has to do with the business. I mean, she's a multitasking machine. And so I think that all of these things make us stronger and move us forward. I mean, we got a Vietnam vet that called the show that watches it on YouTube. I mean, these are all strengths that integrate us. Anyway. All I'm saying is that we should be, uh, we should be headed toward, we should be encouraging the, the highest common denominator, not the lowest. And so, yeah, those are the kinds of things. All right. So my store is supposed to open in a minute. If you have any questions about growing cannabis, I'm going to sort of wind the show down. If you want to call in, this show is weekends at 9. <clears throat> Saturdays, it's an hour. I try to take as many calls as possible on Saturdays. On Sundays, I like to go over the used equipment that I bought and tell you customer stories. And I have a little more free time because I got a two-hour show. I apologize for being so fucking high today. I mean, once a year, like you see like the Mark and Brian, I remember once a year, they used to have like a show where they drank on their show. Look, that sounds even less fun. Um, these are my sponsors. My Grow Boss Mega Meter. PPM and pH for 79 bucks, even less if you come in my store. Green pad. In fact, they gotta send me more because <laughs> I sold it all from my set in your this is the front of my store. This is the front of my store. You can see the used equipment off here to the right. Those are the T5s over there. And then this is the back of my store. And I got like a standard like uh 20 foot, like 60 foot by 20 foot store, but the front 40 feet are the store. But the front 30 feet of the store, I got 10 feet here, and then there's storage in the back. So I have an even smaller space. Um, Clonex Solution, Clonex Root Maximizer. Yeah, I always tell you guys, Clonex Solution, baby food for your plants. You'll probably want to use it the whole way through. Green Pad Juniors. Literally, there was no product that caused more roots than by itself than the Green Pad Junior that goes in those trays. I mean, everything helped with the roots. But overall, CO2 seemed to be the second best. 
tray 11 and 12. There's tray 11's the mystery tray, which I'm not going to tell you. And then there's tray 12, which I'm not, I may never tell you what's in tray 12. And then I'm, uh, Root Riot starter plugs and, uh, and just try to remember. The more peaceful you are about this, the better you grow, the easier your life, the better we are to each other. And a lot of people talk about the cannabis style and lifestyle, and it really is. I mean, you know, even the one of the one of the growers today commented, he's not growing to get friends because as soon as you start smoking cannabis, a circle forms. You know, there's a company in California that opened at a seed bank and a, a, a facility and occasionally they sell their seeds and people line up the day before dude there's never a shooting there's never any problems it's cannabis you go to a cannabis convention and there's one dui and they're on molly or some shit like that or x but you never have the problems with cannabis you never have the problems with cannabis like you have with opiates like you have with alcohol I always hate to hear the stories where people are on opiates and alcohol. I love those stories where you guys get off of those things and you get on cannabis. It's such a better drug. So this show's weekends at nine. I wish you all the best in the world until next week. All the best. You should be able to live your life and do what you want and totally enjoy it as long as it doesn't impose upon others. So I appreciate that. Thank you so much. <laughs>